Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Well, this episode is coming to you from Orlando, Florida, where I am participating in the Plain Tree Conference 2019. It's an international conference on person-centered care. And I'm just really thrilled to be able to share that I am participating in this conference, but I'd like to also tell you how I'm participating in this conference. Long ago, um, I had the honor of being introduced by a colleague to an absolutely fantastic person, Sheila Warnick, who is the founder and president of Share the Care organization. Uh, she had a personal experience in her life, several, that she talked about turning lemons into lemonade, capitalized on, and actually from the tragedies of her personal life, started a not-for-profit organization really focusing on taking care of the caregivers. So her question, her corporate question is, who's taking care of the caregivers? And she's developed a model of care that puts the person being cared for and the caregiver at the center of that model. And the model, the share the care model, is really dedicated to trying to keep the individual being cared for in the community as long as practical and as long as safe, but also putting a care group around the caregiver who is um, desperately trying to do the best by their family member or friend and um, really supporting that unit in a way that no other model I have ever found um, has. So Sheila and I struck up a friendship with our joint um, focuses on caregivers and I was offered the honor of being a board member of the Share the Care organization several years ago, and I have been serving on that board since. So the reason I'm in Orlando at the Plain Tree Conference is because Sheila and I are here representing Share the Care, and we've been given several opportunities. One, to do a pre-class about long-term care and how the Share the Care model fits into that, uh, which we did yesterday with 45 people um, dedicated to long-term care venue caregiving. And today we are in the vendor hallway chatting up uh, the, care, the Share the Care model to everyone who will be coming through and we expect to have a couple of thousand people attending this conference. So we're, we're coming to you from the, uh, the auditorium where all the vendors are and we just sat down, finished setting up our booth and having coffee and I'm actually going to try to interview Sheila before she's had her coffee. So <laughs> this, is a, this is really a breakthrough moment. So, Sheila, how are you? <laughs> I'm great, and it is scary to be interviewed before you had coffee. <laughs> but only a good friend would set you up in such a way, yeah, right? right? Exactly. <laughs> um, so, you are a good friend. You are a wonderful friend, and you are a wonderful board member <laughs> and professional. Oh, thank and you. that is the reason I am so glad to be here with Phyllis because <laughs> this is a whole new area for Share the Care. Uh, usually we're talking to caregivers and health professionals in general, but this time at this conference, we have the opportunity, as Phyllis mentioned, to talk to long-term care professionals, mm -hmm. as well as we're going to do a master class uh, in a couple of days on how Share the Care can strengthen and support discharge planning in hospitals. Right. Because as you know, and many of you out there know, that people, when they are taking their loved one home from the hospital, sometimes are given extraordinarily difficult um, instructions on how to take care of them once they get them home. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, being a caregiver, and I've been one many times, when someone is telling you something that's, that's brand new, it's frightening, and you don't always hear what you're being told or what you're being trained to do. Right. So that's why uh, we feel it's very important that a caregiver have one or two additional people with them who are part of their share the care group who can be present at discharge and hear and ask questions and also learn some of the skills that are taught at that point. So right. they have a much better chance of not coming back to the hospital. Well, that, that is true. And for those of us who have worked, who have had elder parents or have worked with groups, we usually say, 
you know, just like when you go to the doctor, you know, um, make sure you bring a list of questions because in that moment, you're going to forget what you need to ask. And the doctor's visits these days are an average of 15 minutes. Right. Okay. So when we start doing discharge planning, which really should happen at the point of admission, it's wonderful if there are several support people that can be there, as you say, because many ears yes. make a complete message. And they also ask different kinds of questions. They can take notes for the care. Right. But also, even before admission, when someone's diagnosed with something, I wish they could learn about Share the Care right away so they could start thinking about accepting help from others, which is another kind of stumbling block for a lot of caregivers, and, and quite understandably, uh, to, instead of having to ask for every little job that you need help with, if you had a group, they'd come to you every week and say, what can we do for you this right, week? Right. And take that burden off. Right. But this is very exciting to be at a Plain Tree Conference again. Yes. We, yes. Were, we were at the one last year. Uh, but this one, we've had, we're having two opportunities to speak. And I was very, very pleased with the reactions we got from the long-term care professionals. Right. right so so one, of, one of the things that really came out of yesterday's presentation with the long-term care professionals that we, we shared the whole day with was, um, you know, we had a, a group of people from New Brunswick, Canada, who were sharing with us that in that particular section or province of Canada, they can't build long-term care facilities fast enough because of the aging population in that rural area of Canada. Um, well, what if they didn't have to build long-term care facilities that fast? Um, what if they were able to start to create a different mindset for providing long-term care, which really focused on keeping people in the community as long as practical and as long as safe. And part of the reasons, and you and I both know that part yes. of the reasons why people perhaps have an early admission to a long-term care facility is because the caregiver themselves might be not well, they might be of a certain age, and they just may not have any resources. And as much as they would like to try to keep somebody home, they can't because they don't have the support. And in order to take care of people at home, many times that means that somebody's career has to go on hold and not everybody's in a position where they don't have income for not several only, months or a year. Not only career, you have no income, like this happened to me, and you mm -hmm. have no savings left right. by the time you're finished. And also, depending on what you're doing, actually a lot of caregivers for patients with Alzheimer's disease or other dementia sometimes predecease their loved ones because That's right. it is such a strenuous, That's right. um, a painful emotional experience yes. oftentimes. Right. Um, having support is probably the most important thing a caregiver can do, not only for the loved one, but for, but themselves. for themselves. Right. So the share the care model, okay, is an evidence informed model that really gives you a step-by-step, -step, literal step-by-step -step guide of how to put a care group around an individual. And it's not up to the caregiver to read the beginning of the book, which shows you how, tells you how it is scripted. The meeting that brings everyone together is scripted, but rather two friends who want to help will step in and read those chapters, work with the family And know what caregiver. the next steps are to figure out right. who could you invite, what kind of help do you need, right. so that you can get started right off the bat. Right. So, you know, as I'm starting to learn more and more over the years of being affiliated and associated with Share the Care organization, I started thinking of more and more applications, and quite honestly, I think this is the missing ingredient for discharge planning. I think that um, we do a good job of informing patients when we discharge them, I, know, I, I totally believe in the teach back process. We teach patients about their medications or perhaps their treatments. We make uh, follow up um, physician um, appointments for them. We, we do everything to make sure that their next steps are going to be safe. Yet, there's a difference between informing a patient and empowering a patient. Yes. And if you were really had a discharge plan, and a process where when you go into back into that community, terrified often, right, that you know, I'm not really sure if I'm gonna be able to handle this, and you know you have a support system, 
that certainly can make follow-up phone calls, clarify information, do all the things that family members would do. I'm sure hospitals give people a big list yep. of resources. That's right. You know how much time it takes to call each of each those of resources, resources, talk to right. someone, if you can find someone and get feedback. That can be handled by other people so easily. So it's not overwhelming and yes. it actually gets done. And I think that this is honestly the answer to avoidable readmissions within 45 days. I think there is a win-win for everybody with this model. I think there's a win, a win for the organization to certainly empower patients and not just inform patients. I think there is a, a win to be had where you make an honest connection with human beings so that your patients have a certain sense of, of um, healthcare organization loyalty, physician loyalty, really feeling that they were cared for from the point of admission to the point of discharge and to the point of going back home, wherever home happens to be. And, and then you have a way of being able to support that person so that you're meeting your metrics so you don't have the avoidable readmissions within the 30 or 45 day period, whatever that is. So we have had patients in the, fam in the share the care model who have been in the community from months until years. Um, it, it is an extraordinary thing, which I hope to bring more information to you over the next couple of days. Um, so you'll be seeing me, you know, we'll be editing our video here to try to bring in as much information as possible and also speak to people about how they feel Share the Care might dovetail into that. And also in this video, I want to bring a little bit more in about the Plain Tree program so you can um, be that much more informed about what Plain Tree can offer everyone. Yeah, I think plain tree and share the care is like a beautiful fit because we're all about taking care of the family, not just the individual, the whole family, uh, because they're hurting too when someone is ill or aging or whatever the circumstances. So um, it was such a, a great thing to discover plain tree and the people who are involved with this method of caring, making the whole experience in the hospital beautiful is is incredible and I wish it had been around when you know my mother was going yep. in and out yep. of hospitals yep. um, but we're improving as we're going yes. Healthcare is evolving you know and um, in all deference to health care let's face it since 1985 with the DRGs we haven't put a firm foot on you know what a model of care should look like let alone how we're going to pay for it so it keeps evolving this is one industry where our revenue generation our ability to bill our ability to be reimbursed for the services um, is never the same year after year because of all the political stuff going on but the the oversight the regulations um, are really extremely intense so if there is other creative solutions out there to help anchor good solid care why we try to navigate all of the politics and all of the oversight within healthcare we should take advantage of it so you'll be hearing more as we go along through the weekend and also if you'd like to learn more about share the care just in general when you have time to go on the internet it's www.sharethecare.org thanks Okay, and Sheila and the organization is on Twitter and Facebook and we invite and um, Instagram and we invite you to follow her on that as well. Hi, I'm with Rachel, who is the program's coordinator for Person Centered Universe and Person Centered Universe is uh, featuring True Doors, which I am finding absolutely fascinating. Rachel, tell us about it. So True Doors is a company that's based out of the Netherlands and so essentially what they've done is they're working with long-term care organizations um, and other healthcare organizations to be able to provide a person-centered element to long-term care. So kind of take the shift away from institutionalized. Make it um, their own. Yes, make it their own. So mm -hmm. essentially what they do is they have these decals and mm -hmm. so they would go on a pre-existing door and so they're basically like a sticker if you were to do a car wrap for your car, but they go right on the pre-existing door and they really give the resident an element of choice and they're able to kind of be able to tell their story through their door. So they can either choose a door that is from a pre-existing catalog or they can create a door for themselves. So whether that's within the window of the door, you add a photo of, um, 
the landscape. We've had a resident before that used to love to watch her husband fish out of the back window. And so she has a photo of her husband fishing out of the back window. So On her door. Yeah, so it's something that not only helps with wayfinding for people who are living with dementia, but it's also something that really kind of brings in a home-like feel. Too. And I'm sure that's a conversation starter, so mm -hmm. people start to engage and stay that much more yeah. in, in socialization. Yep. You know, how, what a wonderful idea. Yeah, now, you're, the engineering companies are gonna love this because it's peel and it sticks. And does it come off easily if they have to change it? Or? So it comes off easily. Mm -hmm. um, so I know a lot of homes that we've worked with, what they do is, of course, you have some residents, um, new residents coming in. So they usually give them the option of either keeping the pre-existing door. And sometimes people will actually do that to honor the person that lived there before and was able to choose the door. How wonderful. Or they may choose their own. So, okay. Yeah, they're wonderful. Um, something that's simple inexpensive and can make just a world of a difference when you're walking down the hall you don't feel like you're in a traditional hospital setting or nursing home setting right yeah it makes it their home I you know I, I'm a former director of long-term care for many years um, I loved this as soon as I saw it because it really does bring that element of home back to their home which yes. is now you know uh, you know the long-term care facility yep. but you know nonetheless their home so if we can personalize it that much more that's great yeah thanks so much thank you so I have found a group here that I'm very excited to share with you it is the National University Plain Tree Students Committee this is a students committee that is plain tree certified or plain tree designated and they are doing fundraising and I really want to share with you I'm going to we're going to speak to Joseph and Joseph's going to speak about what exactly their program is doing to support students and to raise awareness build compassion and build empathy well good morning Joe uh, good morning how, how are you tell me about your your the National University Students Committee and what you're doing and what the purpose is so I'm the chair of the National University Plain Tree Student Committee and what we are doing as the first higher educational institution that is Plain Tree certified is helping students, specifically nursing students, healthcare administration, okay. public, uh, public health students, and other health organ uh, programs to learn how to be you know, more person-centered and bring these Plain Tree principles into their future profession. So you're doing this at the point of student engagement. We're not waiting for people to become accredited or, or licensed or anything. Exactly, yes. You're doing it at the point of student engagement. Yes. I think this is so fabulous. Okay, how did this come about? Uh, so NU was, or I believe NU approached Plain Tree uh, and saw if this was a potential partnership and when they said yes, that's how it started. And we saw an opportunity for the students at this point okay. to you know, give them a, a head start on learning compassion care, self-care, and these other things that Plain Tree really promotes. We promote. Fabulous. So, such as we provide yeah, um, essential oils to students during uh, finals weeks. We, uh, we created a student-led partnership with uh, one of the leading advocates for uh, the homeless population in Southern California, Catholic Charities, where they let us volunteer in meaningful ways that capitalize on our education. Okay. Uh, uh, Plain Tree is a big supporter of us, so they are letting us sell a couple of the speaker, speakers' books to help support our causes. And one of the bigger things that we're doing is the Zen Den at each of the campuses, and you have over a dozen campuses throughout California. So I have been searching the, um, the vendor forum to find this company. This company is called Language of Caring, and Language of Caring is a new affiliate of Plain Tree. And I have the pleasure of being here with Jill, who is the Senior Vice President for Global, Global Services with Language of Caring, and I'd like her to share with you what their company does. Jill, walk us through what, you're, what okay. Language of Caring does. Sure. Well, thank you for this opportunity. Everything we do is about, of course, improving performance and the human experience in healthcare by making caring visible. So we assume if you're in healthcare, you care, but is your caring coming across is a different question. And we know that the reality is that as we get busier, we become more task focused and our communication becomes more task focused too. So although of course we have good intentions, the people on the other end of our communication may not be feeling it. So we're focused on making caring visible. What are the skills, the concrete and 
specific behaviors and skills that help all staff, caregivers, clinicians and non-clinicians, and providers make sure that their caring comes across in every interaction. So if I'm understanding this correctly, you're helping to raise awareness about the importance of language and words. Is that not right? Yes, but more than awareness, we are actually doing the training that helps people really with the communication skills to make sure that their caring is visible in every interaction because of course words matter and I think when we're at our best perhaps we do make our caring visible but as we get busier it becomes harder and harder in some of the sticky situations it becomes difficult and so we teach the skills and tools to give everyone what they need to make sure that they are communicating with empathy and compassion. That's wonderful. Do you want to share a website with us? Sure. www.languageofcaring.org. That's wonderful. And really, keep up the great work. I Thank know this you. is very, very needed. Thank you. So I really want to share a product that I fully, fully endorse. Um, again, you know, these products, I have no financial gain over them. These are just things that I am sharing with you, my viewers, because I think there are tremendous assets to taking care of the patients that we are taking care of and of course the family caregivers as well. So I am with David. David is with Sky Factory and he is in charge of research and development and the product is a virtual window. And I just have to tell you from personal experience, it makes all the difference in the world in an environment. And as a feng shui master, you know I'm big on environments. But to be able to, to create a serenity room or even have this in residence lounges or even in waiting areas, especially intense waiting areas like surgical waiting rooms or things of that nature, you can't go wrong with a product like this. Hi, David, my new best friend. How are you? <laughs> Pretty good. Thank you for stopping by. No problem. So tell us about you know, your company and this absolutely incredible product. Oh, well, uh, Sky Factory was founded uh, 17 years ago by Bill Witherspoon. Bill is a, an artist, a watercolorist by a training. And he lives out in the southeastern Oregon desert, literally out in the middle of nowhere. And he began to notice that living under vast, um, vastness, basically in the desert with a, a very wide horizon line, a very infinite zenith above your head, had a really um, very powerful effect on his physiology, like all your biometrics kind of slow down, which we know from experience when we take a vacation. And he wondered, how could we do this in some of the most stressful environments that we know which so, right um, try to recreate that moment in time for others correct mm -hmm. so he said could we take a limited amount of space and recreate that notion of being connected to a much larger exterior mm -hmm. so that's when he got interested in uh, basically studying uh, what's called multi-sensory illusions we all are familiar with the use of imagery for decoration in uh, healthcare environments but illusions have a secondary and more uh, powerful effect because they actually use uh, visual content as maps images when they have the proper context in terms of how they're framed the type of light that they uh, basically project and how the images are segmented they can actually trigger uh, what's called the biophilic map that's a map in your memory of your past experience of being under the sky or looking at a wide horizon line so our images the way we capture them the way we compose them and the way we frame them they're all meant to be to the proper scale and perspective to really fool your body into feeling that you're closer to the outside. I, I think it's like a virtual window. When I look especially at this scene, okay, mm -hmm. which is your you know your classic beach scene, mm -hmm. I I think of a room looking at in Hawaii or mm -hmm. some other beautiful island uh, with mountains and just you know as you say it takes me right back there. Mm -hmm. But I think it's more the piece that really speaks to me, although mm -hmm. I think the visual speaks for itself. Uh-huh. But when you put it with the sound, and we all know that sound therapy is extremely popular, and we're getting more about that, I think this makes this an incredible product, just an incredible product. That's one of the things that uh, we study, you know, sometimes when you see a lot of nature footage, particularly on screens, you usually have like a, a mood 
soundtrack that goes with it, which can be relaxing. But here we found that it's most effective when the sound corresponds to the actual yes. footage that you're seeing. What you're seeing. Right. And also the way the we compose the shots, you know, using Bill's experience as an artist, we're drawing the eye in basically in the thirds from foreground, background, what's close to you, how the foliage overhangs. These are all things that are multi-sensory for the eye and the brain to right. interpret. And they just create that, they recall that memory of when you've been on vacation and you've had this does. room. Yeah, it certainly does. Now I know you also have some still products, which I think are incredibly uh, creative because mm -hmm. what it really does is it takes literally the patient's view. Now the patient's usually in bed looking up and we don't think about what are they looking at. So wouldn't it be more lovely instead of some Celotex ceiling stuff, you know, tiles, you know, or a crack in the, in the ceiling or, you know, whatever hardware is on the ceiling, wouldn't it just be absolutely lovely if the patients and even the staff was looking up and getting the feeling of being in the outdoors, even though reality dictates that right now they need to be indoors. Right. One of the things that we sometimes forget in, in clinical interiors is that the body has its own intelligence in terms of healing. And we already know from a, you know, millennia that when you're out in nature, your body actually heals, heals a lot faster. So that's the notion behind even with photography, providing the proper color temperature in terms of like uh, approximating what daylight feels like. Uh, because when you're a captive observer, like you were mentioning, like a patient, mm -hmm or even a staff member walking into that room, that just that reminder that you're close and connected to the sky. The sky is the most universal experience we have of nature. That's true. And that's why it's such a powerful barometer. That is true. Um, right. Well, I want to congratulate you. Um, certainly your research and development is going a long way to improving mm -hmm. patient experience and staff experience. And I want to compliment Sky Factory for its vision. And I wish you continued success. Oh, thank you. Do you want to give us a website? Sure, it's skyfactory.com. Okay. So I am roaming the Plane Tree uh, Conference uh, vendor floor, and I have come across something very special, very special indeed. It is National University. Now, this is a not-for-profit university that was founded in 1971, and it was founded by two veterans. And they have a wonderful program, and I'd like to introduce you to Manir, who is... Manir, tell me again, what is you do? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Manir is the account manager for the Community College Pathway. Hello, Manir. Hello. Thank you for being patient with me as I try Absolutely. to play Thank with my, my cell phone here. <laughs> okay, I am just so impressed with a college that's started by veterans. How fabulous is this? Yeah, so we are please. based in California, San Diego. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have about 26 campuses throughout California okay. and one in Nevada. Okay. Well, our classes are one month long and you can take classes on site or online. If you're out of state students, of course you prefer online. But the class are one month long and 30 days you finish one subject one at a time. So every day for 30 days? Yes, not every day for 30 days. Whenever you make time. So the class is posted for 30 days? You're fully in charge of taking control of your class for 30 days that means so what you do as soon as you're done with your work as soon as you have a family kids if you're done with you do your homework it's you managing your own time the only thing the professor is walking with you to this life experience in 30 days one subject at a time again well I got to tell you talk about thinking out of the box now I have an online degree uh -huh. so I I'm fully vested in the online education approach I have no problem with it at all I, I just think it's so unique. Now, besides your degree in nursing, are there other degrees Absolutely. that are offered? Absolutely. Starting with the Bachelor of Arts in Business Administration, Bachelor of Arts in Psychology, all the way to leadership, human behavior, psychology, business, leadership, on and on. Okay. Same as a state as university. As a conventional university. Absolutely. We are we are WASC accredited university, which is the regional accreditation. That means we're a transfer-friendly um, school. Okay. So student can transfer from community colleges to national university and from national university to any other state university for the pre program or doctorate. With no, no, it can be seamless. Absolutely. So. I'm two times alumni of national university and proud to be. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. Um, I just want to compliment you. I think this is wonderful. Again, I am so thrilled that this is something that's started by veterans. 
Um, and I just want to share with everybody, as I just kind of take, take a look here, that you can learn more about um, National University on YouTube. They have several YouTube sites. They've got one little video running right now. Um, but share with us a um, website. Absolutely. National University, www.nu.edu. There you go. Check out this school. I think this might be the answer to many people's prayers. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you.